I want to share the word of God. Nataka kushiriki neno la Bwana. I have uh, 38 minutes. Nazo dakika 38. I had prepared a sermon for of 2 hours. Nalitayarisha maumivu ya masaa mawili. No, don't be scared. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you uh, Pastor Kaunda and your wife. Asante sana mchungaji Kaunda na you have been a blessing since I joined this school you have been there for us. Pamoja na wako mmekuwa baraka sana tagia nipo ingia hapa. And the rest of the teachers whom I have not seen uh, teacher Jen taught my daughter. Na walimu wengine boss jaona mwalimu Jerry amfunza binti yangu. Uh, teacher Julia Mwalimu Julia taught my two sons. Akawafunza watoto wangu wawili and the others. Na wengine. Uh, God bless you so much. Bwana wabariki sana. Teacher Naomi is teaching my my son now. Na teacher Naomi anamfunza mvulana wangu jana wangu. I want to share from the book of John chapter 6 verse 1 to 15. Yohana 6:1 hadi 15. John chapter 6 verse 1 to 15. Yohana 6 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa 6. John is in the New Testament. Iko katika agano jipya kitabu cha Yohana. So don't go to the Old Testament. Kwa hivyo usiende agano la kale. Sometime after this, baada uh, haya, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. That is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the thing, they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples the Jewish passover festival was near when jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him he said to philip where shall we buy bread for these people to eat he asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do philip answered him It will take more than a half years wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small belly loaves and two small fish, but how far will go will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down there was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down about 5000 men were there excluding women and children Jesus then took the loaves gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted he did the same with the fish <clears throat> when they had all had enough to eat he said to his disciples Gather the pieces that are left over let nothing be wasted so they gathered them and filled two baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten after the people saw the sign Jesus performed they began to say surely this is a prophet who is to come into the world Jesus knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force withdrew again to a mountain by himself may the lord bless his word uh, this morning na bwana alibariki neno lake asubuhi um a story is told and you have heard these stories hadithi imesema tumeisikia of professional conmen kwa watu ambao ni wanyaganyifu kitaaluma who specialize on people who want to have their money multiplied ambao sana sana wanaangazia wale watu wanataka pesa zao kuwa nyingi so they come and they tell you a very nice story wanakuja na kupatia hadithi nzuri sana and then they tell you uh, we want to pray and multiply your money na kwa bia tutataka kuomba pesa yako ijumulike but we must pray when we are holding the money lakini tutaomba sharti wakati tumeshimba hizo pesa so they tell you to close your eyes wanakuambia funga macho and the way they disappear you don't even know na wakati wanapotea hutajua when you say amen you will not see anybody near you sema amen hautaona yeyote a pastor friend of mine mchungaji rafiki yangu was uh, called by uh, nigerians alihadaiwa na nigerian in the house alihadaiwa na mnigeria they told him they were to multiply the money that he had akamwambia kwamba wataenda kujumlisha pesa zake and they asked him to give them to give them 
uh, some notes, a few notes here. Yeah. And actually they multiplied. And he went and bought and it was German money. And they lied to him that their mission is to make men of God have money to do God's work. So he fell for the trap. So he went and sold the land he had. He went and borrowed loan, got some loans from people, from some church members, and he brought those, all that amount of money to them. And he lost it. The same guys wrote to me an email the other day. And I preached to them and I told them, stop what you are doing. What makes people fall into the trap of multiplication of money? What does God expect us to do when faced by scarcity? When we are surrounded by pressing needs around us. If somebody gives you a million shillings today, what will you do with that million shillings? If somebody multiplies that million by ten times, what will you do with the money? I'm telling you, if you are given the money, you will wonder how creative you are because of the number of ideas that will come on how to use the money. So, through this passage you want to see what does God expect us on the principle of multiplication? Or in, in other words, having faith in a God who multiplies. This story is given by all the Gospels. And I like the way Matthew brings it out. But I will also look at Mark to see what he says. Faith for multiplication. Faith for multiplication. In this story, when you look at the account of Mark, uh, the disciples discovered that it was getting late in the night. And they were in a far place which was far from the supermarket. There were no hotels near, they were in, a, in an isolated place. So they said to Jesus, it is getting late. These people need to be released to go back to the towns and buy food. Send them away. And Jesus was in the middle of his sermon. But he answered and he said, You know what Jesus to, uh, I mean, uh, spoke to them really shocks me. When you read Mark chapter 6, he says, Marikosita inasema, You give them something to eat. Wale. And I'm sure they wondered, Na wakashanga, Jesus, what are you talking about? Yes, wasemani. It will take a half year's wages. Nusu mwaka ajira ya mtu. Just look at your salary. Angalia mshara wako. Not the net gross. Ile haijakatwa. Time six. That is the amount that was required not to feed everybody to get satisfied. To get a slice or two of the bread. You can imagine. So he told them give them something to eat. And they wondered what are you talking about? And also they wondered, should we spend all that amount of money because of feeding people? We didn't invite, we didn't invite the people. They are the ones who followed us. Let them go and look for food. Why did Jesus tell them that? Why did Jesus tell them something almost impossible? Jesus wanted them to put their faith into action. Because he had taught them how to put their faith into action. He had demonstrated to them faith. So he wanted them to put their faith 
in him. They should have just told Jesus, speak a word and bread will be here. You told us the other day you are the bread of life, bread yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning I want to tell you, Tell the Lord to speak a word regarding your situation. Check the promises of God concerning your life. Apply faith to them. Where he says you will be the head and all the tail. Where he says I will supply your needs according to the riches in glory. When he tells you seek the kingdom first and all other things will be added unto you. You stand on those promises. Praise the Lord. So Philip stood before Jesus and Jesus threw a question to him. And he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this to test him because already he knew what he will do. Jesus was testing Philip. Some of the situations that God allows in our lives it is to test us. It is to test our faith. And Philip answered in an answer that doesn't show faith. He told him how much it will cost. And when you look at uh, what Jesus was talking about, Jesus was not talking about how much it will cost. Jesus was asking him, where are we going to buy? He's being asked, where are we going to buy bread? But him is talking about the cost. And I'm sure Philip is not different from us. When we get a challenge, we always think of how much will it cost. When you are faced by a situation, we look at it from the perspective of how much it will will cost. We look at how, how our pay slip looks like. We look at how much money do we have in the bank. And then we say like some people who are saying nowadays, they say the math is not mathing. And when somebody tells you, I feel in God, you don't understand. Be to go ground in different. If you are on, on stipend, when you receive the stipend, it causes a stampede in your mind. Because you don't know what to do. I have faced such a situation. I remember one time our children, uh, the first born, the second born, they were in grade two, three there. And the school had opened. It was in January, I'll never forget. And I didn't have money for the school fees. And I knew uh, very soon the head teacher will send a note. So I, I was, I can tell you I was worried. In my account, I didn't have money. The little money that was there was in my wife's account. Which was not enough for the school fees. And the math was not mathing at all. And I remember I, I, I walked down. I was staying uh, in focus. That's where I was working. And I, I came and when I reached the cooperative bank, my wife's uh, bank was equity and it was, it, there was an ATM down there. And I, I knew what was in the account. When I was taking the corner to go down, I am a worried person. 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Roho Mtakatifu akaninenea. And he told me, akaniambia, you have enough money in the account. Una pesa ya kutosha katika benki. To pay the school fees. Kulipia kala. So I wondered, nikashanga. Did I hear the Holy Spirit word? Je, nilisikia Roho Mtakatifu vyema? Now I'm just a few meters walking down. Kwa hivyo nataramka mita kadhaa. I walked down and I saw the gate of St Mary's. Nikaenda nikaona lango la St Mary pale. And I now I was saying in a few minutes I will confirm whether I heard from the Holy Spirit. I found a queue on that ATM of Equity Bank. And when I reached I tapped first to see the balance. And the amount that I found was much much more than what I was expecting in the account. So I withdrew the money quickly. Just in case the bank had made a mistake. I will pay later. <laughs> so I came to school here. I paid the school fees. I went home and I told my wife. I found this amount of money in your account. And she also she was, she was shocked. How come there was more money in the account? Wate kulikuwa na salio nyingi pale katika account. And we said tutajua tukiendelea. Tutajua tukiendelea. She was on leave when she went back to work. Alikuwa likizoni wakati alirejea pale kazini. The first news she received was that ujumbe wa kwanza aliyoupokea. The company decided to give them a bonus. Baba kampuni iliamua kuwapatia bonus. And that was the first and the last bonus in that company. <laughs> I'm telling you, God shall supply your needs according to His glory. He will do more than and exceedingly more than you imagine or think. Silver and gold belongs to our God. He is a God who can multiply the little you have. Somebody shout hallelujah. Worry would have killed me. But God was there. Jesus Yesu. asked them, what do you have? And Andrew came and Andrew was the brother of Simon. We have nothing <laughs> but there's a small boy who has uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. And the boy is willing to surrender his meal. Sometimes we concentrate more on the feeding. But we, we, we forget about the small boy. And when I reached there, I stood there. And I waited on the Lord on the, on the story behind the boy. One of the questions I asked myself, why was a small boy willing to to surrender and give and sacrifice his lunch. And when I was preparing the sermon, I asked my grade two son, why do you think the boy shared his lunch? And I will tell you what he told me. He told me, probably the boy had a, had a previous experience of Jesus' miracles. Perhaps he had heard the story about Jesus. He had more faith than the disciples of what Jesus can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the faith of children. The other day we had a, we had a kesha in our house. Uh, and we were praying. And I stopped praying to listen to what my grade two boy was, was praying. And the kind of things he was praying. One of the things which struck me. I, he prayed that I will, I will have money to buy his brother a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Hallelujah. The faith of children. Parents, if you have no faith, at the moment you have no faith, when you reach a moment you have no faith, tell your child to pray. You will be shocked. And that's why we bring our children 
na jamaa tunaleta watoto wetu to a christian school kwa shule ambayo ni ya kikristo so that they may learn how to pray ili wajifunze jinsi ya kuomba so that they may learn how to have faith in god wajifunze kuwa na imani ndani ya Mungu I have taught my boy how to pray. Nimemfunza mtoto wangu jinsi ya kuomba. But when he was uh, in grade 1. Lakini wakati alikuwa darasa la kwanza. No, I think he was in PP PP2. Alikuwa baya chakachia baya. Yes, somewhere there. One time he prayed and he said, "Wakati mmoja ni pray in the mighty in the powerful blood of Jesus." Nimeomba kwa damu kuu ya Yesu. And I, I never had, I never taught him about the power of the blood of Jesus. So he talked of the powerful blood of Jesus. Alisema kuhusu damu yenye nguvu ya Yesu. So when he said amen I told him ask him. Wakati alisema amina nikamuuliza. Where did you learn how to pray that way? Ulijifunza wapi kuomba jinsi hiyo? He told he told me our teacher has taught us. Akaniambia mwalimu wetu alitufunza. I felt proud to have a child with a teacher who is born again. Vizuri kuwa na mwana katika darasa la mwalimu ameokoka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The faith of your child can carry you. Imani ya mtoto wako inaweza ikakubeba. The second thing which is very important. Jambo la pili ambalo lina maana sana. This boy must have been taught well by by the mother. Huyu kijana shati alifunzwa vyema na mama yake. I know fathers have a good role of uh, teaching children. Najua baba wana jia tofauti ya kuwafunza watoto wao. But I'm sure when the mother was packing the food for the boy. Lakini na hakika wakati mama alikuwa anaandaa kile chakula kwa mwanawe. He told him in case you meet another boy or another girl who doesn't have food you can share with him. Alimwambia ukikutana na kijana mwingine ama msichana hana chakula unaweza gawa naye. The virtue of generosity. Ni jambo ambalo za ukarimu. This boy was generous. Huyu kijana akawa mkarimu. Let us teach our children the importance of sharing with others the little that we have. Wafunze watoto wetu kwa wana na wengine kidogo walicho nacho. One of the things in this school in Cornerstone, jambo moja katika shule hii ya Cornerstone, is that the teachers teach the children how to share. Ni kwa sababu wana walimu wanawafunza wanafunzi jinsi ya kugawana. Because from the one the first born to the last born kwa sababu kuanzia mzaliwa wa kwanza hadi wa mwisho they tell me when they are having when we buy them snacks wananiambia wakati ni wanunua vyakula they are told by the teacher to share with the ones who doesn't have wanaambiwa na walimu wagawana na wengine ambao hawana sometimes they mix the 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 the, the, the snacks wakati mwingine hizi chakula wanachanganya zote so that they can share ili waweze kuwagawana but we are becoming very individualistic lakini wengine tumekuwa binafsi sana When my firstborn son was small, wakati mzaliwa wangu wa kwanza alikuwa mdogo, there was a serious case because a parent came. Kukakuwa na kesi hapa zito sana. To complain that she bought very expensive snacks for her son. Akasema kwamba alinunulia chakula cha gharama ya kwa mwanao. And the teacher could have the audacity to give out those snacks to other children. Na mwalimu akachukua kile chakula kugawa na watoto wengine. And Uh, uh, Mrs. Kimathi did not mean our words. Mrs. Kimathi kama alimaanisha maneno yake yote aliyosema. She told that parent if you cannot allow your child to share with others. Akamwambia kama hutamruhusu mwanao kugawana na wengine. You are free to take your child to another school. Uhuru kumpeleka mtoto wako shule nyingine. In Cornerstone we teach our children the virtue of generosity. Katika hii shule tunafunza watoto wetu ukarimu. Let us clap for our teachers. Tuwapigie makofi walimu wetu. Because we have become increasingly selfish and individualistic. Kwa sababu tumeongezeka kuwa binafsi sana. We want to accumulate wealth and even corrupt and steal from the poor. Tunataka kusanya mali hata kuimbia ambao ni maskini. That's why it is very difficult nowadays to get services from offices because people want money. Kwa sababu imekuwa ngumu sana hata kupata kuhudumia katika maofisi watu wanataka pesa. You have been gone to an office and you are asking yourself are there Christians in this office? Unaenda katika ofisi unajiuliza mbona hakuna wakristo hapa? Am I the only one who go to those offices? Sijui kama ni mimi peke yangu naenda zile ofisi. Where somebody cannot give you a service? Wakati mtu hawezi akakuhudumia because they want a bribe. Kwa sababu wanataka hongo. Am I the only one? Je, ni mimi tu? Am I the only Jew in Jerusalem? Yes. Ni mimi peke yangu. That's why we have become very corrupt. We don't want to share our services to other fellow Kenyans. A old man comes there. No namwambia kuja next week. No namwambia kuja kuja the other week. Ama wiki ijayo. One time I told a policeman. Wakati mmoja kukutana na polisi. This money you pick and people have not given you 
It's a curse. The other day there was an incident at uh, Rostas. A lorry overturned. And that lorry was carrying beans for starving people in northern Kenya. What did our brothers and sisters in, in Kenya do? They parked their big cars, bigger than my small car, and they picked those beans. I saw somebody carrying a whole bag of beans. And they opened the boot of a big car to put the beans there. Who gave him those beans? So we were driving and my children asked me that question in the car. Dad, if you are there, what would you have done? I told them I would not have picked. Why? And everybody else is speaking. Because the owner of the beans has not given me. And that's why I will sing the song that we must not only teach our children, demonstrate to our children the right virtues. The other day I was arrested because one of my parking lights were not working. And I was taken to the police station. And I was with my family in the car. And where I was going, I was to deliver a sermon. But our children were watching to see what I will do. How I will talk to the policeman. Will I be rude? And he, he told me. Give me 4,000 as cash bill. Uh, or, cash bill. Or, give, or give me 2,000. I release you, you go. I told him, I cannot be walking on a road going to somewhere and I'm not leading people on that road. I cannot. Then he laughed. Akacheka. But he softened his heart and he released me to go. But my children were watching. They wanted to see. You don't tell your children not to smoke. You demonstrate by not smoking in the first place. You are driving on the road and the mata matatu man wants to make your day a bad day. And you roll down the window and the children are there. And you tell him, ngombe wewe. We must teach our children discipline. I'm sorry I'm staying there because I know it's very important. I know where I'm driving at. When my son, the firstborn, was enrolled in school, in nursery, we had, after that we were called for a, a teacher's, a, a parent's meeting. And uh, we were told how the school runs, and one of the things which we were told, uh, we were told that here we don't gain uh, uh, children. We just write in the diary for the parent to know. So after the meeting, I went to teacher Julia. Teacher Julia here. Mrs. Eh? The, other, the other side. Or Sunday school. Yeah, she has been a Sunday school teacher all along. I talked to teacher Julia. I know my boy can be mischievous sometimes. When he does something wrong, take him aside. And I was telling her when my son is called Shalom, when Shalom was standing there, so that he may hear what I'm telling the teacher. From morning up to evening, I am not there. You are the parent. When he does something wrong, take him aside, pinch him, and write in the diary so that I may complete the punishment at home. But now, we come and we 
my daughter the other day when he was here he told me where dad uji kute uji kuzusha i will tell you the truth na kwambia ukweli wewe uji ku kuzusha parents wazazi look at this boy what he did angalia kijana alifanya nini who do you want your child to be unataka mtoto awe nini and because of bebelizari calling our children to baba to mama and at the end of the day kwa sababu ya kuwabebeleza watoto we produce people who are indisciplined tunatengeneza watoto ambao hana nidhamu unemployable ambao hawezi wakaajiriwa some of them they could be good intellectually wakikuwa wazuri kimawazo makimasomo but they have no morals lakini hawana nidhamu they become road engineers wanakuwa mawaadishi wabaya they are corrupted wanakuwa wafisadi what do they do wanafanya nini they give us bad roads wanapatia barabara mbaya it is it is it's common sense ni mambo tunayotumia akili moja then we wonder which engineer did, did this road tunashangaa muhadisi mgani akatengeneza hii barabara because they have something in their pocket kwa sababu kuna kitu mfukoni if you are going to change our nation kama tutabadilisha taifa we will change by having boys with a natural like this boy tutabatengeneza tukiwa na vijana ambao wana nidhamu kama let me share the little that i have nigawe kidogo nilicho nacho jesus was in charge yesu akawa pale and that's why he said na ndio maana akasema have the people sit down waache watu waketi because now he can see fish kwa sababu anaona samaki he can see bread anaona mikate and he held the fish na akashika samaki i wonder what went into his mind na shangaa nini kikaingia mawazoni when he saw the fish wakati aliona samaki when he held the fish wakati alishika samaki the multiplication sign came into his mind akakuja ile ishara ya kujumlisha he saw the millions that will get saved akaona mamilioni ya watu ambao watakufa because he told peter you are going to be a fishers of men maana alimwambia petero utakuwa mfuvi you can see out of 11 disciples unaona kati ya wanafunzi 11 we have billions of people na mabilioni ya watu because there was multiplication kwa sababu kulikuwa na ujumlishaji Jesus saw the bread Yesu akaona mkate and is he remembered I'm the bread of life na akakumbuka mimi ni mkate wa uzima I can break myself as many times as possible vuja mara nyingi niwezavyo and he gave thanks na akashuku na akashuku and he gave all the food na akawapa vyakula and I'm telling you na nawaambieni ah the food multiplied and multiplied chakula kikajumulika as they were passing wakati walikuwa wanapitisha they were multiplying zilikuwa zinaongezeka the bread was multiplying mikate kakao inaongezeka the fish was multiplying na samaki walikao naongezeka because jesus was in charge kwa sababu yesu alikuepo for the principle of multiplication to apply in your life na ili kanuni ya ujumlishaji ikuwe katika maisha yako jesus to be in charge of your life kuhusu yesu wa mundu maisha yako Why do we refuse to allow God to be in charge of our lives? Kwa nini tuna tunakosa kumwachilia Yesu wa mudu maisha yetu? Why have we refused to surrender ourselves to God? Kwaona tumekataa kujitoa kwa Mungu? It is because the devil is always uh, preaching to us. Kwa sababu shetani anakuwa akituhubiria kila wakati. We are like that seed that fell on the path. Sisi ni kama ile begu ilianguka jiani. You are here because Uko hapa kwa sababu you came because it is cornerstone Sunday. Unakupa kwa sababu ni siku ya cornerstone. Oh it is a it's a it's a religious duty every Sunday to come to church. Ama ni shughuli ya kidini kila Jumapili kuja kanisani. So you say preach preach and finish. Anasema mhubiri hubiri wewe maliza. Let me go my way. Naenda nyumbani. Others are like those those seeds that fell on the on the rock. Wengine ni kama begu ilianguka katika mawe. These are the people on what who have uh, uh, they, they they get excited about the, the, the salmon aba wanasisimuka sana kuhusu mahubiri say ah, the lord is going to do something na nasema mungu anaenda kufanya kitu but when they step out lakini wanapotoka they get te- they get tempted wanakuwa katika hali ya majaribio and they forget about it na wanasahau kuhusu but the others lakini wengine are like those seeds that fell among the thorns ni kama begu ambazo zilingaguka katika miimba the cares and the worries of this world mambo na shughuli za ulimwengu because i care so much for my son kwa sababu mnashughulikia sana mtoto i don't want him to stay without a job nasitaki akae bila kazi it is better i give a bread so that he gets a job hadi ningelitoa aonga daili apate kazi i'm sure you followed uh, probably you could have followed uh, the impeachment and you saw somebody giving 800,000 to get a job kama uliofuatilia mambo ya kufutwa kazi pale ya naibu governor mtu akitoa pesa 800 
You say because I, I, I care I don't want my child not to go to a good school you give the principal an envelope. You are wondering if I get saved and I become committed Christian and the person who is paying for my rent is not my husband who will pay for the rent? Those are the cares of this world. God is saying, surrender those cares unto me. Because I am in charge and I'm God who multiplies. God can multiply that, that small money that you have. Look at the left, leftovers, 12 basket full. You know, the meal that the boy gave was small. But the need was great. But there was a greater God in present, the God of multiplication. Keep your hands open. Don't be discouraged. We have a God who does not work with addition sign, he works with the multiplication sign. God takes what is insufficient and uses it to accomplish his purposes. God took a, a, a barren woman called Sarah, an elderly childless couple, Abraham and Sarah, to create the generations that we have, numerous like the stars. Our God can take whatever is given in faith. Give your life to Jesus by faith. And you will see how we will multiply the little that you have. Don't be like the rich ruler. The rich ruler who had great possessions. He was told to sell everything. Give to the poor and come and follow me. And he refused because he was a man of great possessions. He forgot that what I have is very little. There is a God who Owns everything. Surrender what you have. We must have faith in God who multiplies. We must, like the boy, give and share what we have for God's work. The boy did not feed the 5,000. The disciples did not do it. Jesus used them to meet the needs of the people. God is in control. And it is his work that causes multiplication. Surrender to him. Cast your burdens unto him. For he is faithful and he cares. You are in this service and you're not born again. It is your chance to give your life to Jesus. Don't leave that door if you have not surrendered your life to Christ. He saved me when I was a little boy. And I have seen his faithfulness. He has been multiplying what I have every day and the other day. If you are here, you are born again. But the worries and the cares of this world, they have overwhelmed you. Come back to the cross and surrender again. Have in the God who multiplies. Have in the God who multiplies. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. God Almighty, I want to thank you. I want to give you praise. I want to give you adoration. Because you are a faithful God. You are God Almighty. 
We ni Mungu mkuu. Your God who multiplies. We ni Mungu anayejumlisha. Multiply what you ha- what we have oh God. Jumlisha apacho tuko nacho Bwana. We surrender our lives to you oh God. Tutatoa maisha yetu kwa kwa e Mungu. Take control almighty God. Bwana ukachukue ushukana. Take oh God what we have. Chukua tulicho nacho. Even our burdens oh God. Hata mizigo yetu Mungu. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. You there and you saying. Tuko pale na umeokoka. I would like to receive Jesus. Na I want this Jesus who multiplies. Nataka u Yesu ambaye anajumlisha. I want you to be in charge of my life. Na ambaye nataka ushughulikie tufe ushukani katika maisha yangu. Raise up your hand wherever you are. Eh inua mkono wako mahali upo. You saying I want to receive Jesus? Uko pale na ungetaka kuokoka? Up in the balcony. Pale juu. Just raise up your hand I will see it. Inua mkono ungetaka kutoa maisha yako kwa Yesu. You saying I want to receive Jesus. Nasema nangetaka kuokoka kutoa maisha yako. Don't fear what your neighbor will think. Usiogope jirani yako atasema nini. It is our time to surrender. Ni wakati wetu wa kujitoa. Just raise up your hand. Inua mkono wako. And Jesus is going to save you. Na Yesu atakuokoa. Is somebody raising up their hands? Kuna mtu ameinua mkono pale. I want the ushers to stand next to the person who has a Yetaka If somebody shem. has raised your hand just stand next to them. Kama kuna mtu ameinua mkono unaweza simama hapa huko kado yake. This another person at the, at the back there raising up her hand. Kuna mtu pale nyuma na kuna mwingine pale katikati. Ah uh, yes, thank you Ashes. Asante Shemanzi. After the service, baada ya ibada, I will ask the Ashes to pray with those people. Nitataka waombe na wale watu. The prayer of repentance. Waombe na toba and help them join the class which helps people grow in faith. Na wasaidie waingie katika darasa ya watu ambao wanataka kukua kiimani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give Jesus a hand clap. Tupigie Yesu makofi.